semana. His Majesty King Hamad bin Isa Al Khalifa participated along with other GCC leaders in the opening session of the 36th GCC Supreme Council Summit, which commenced this evening under the chairmanship of the custodian of the two holy mosques, King Salman bin Abdul Aziz Al Saud of Saudi Arabia. The session was held in Daria Palace in the Saudi capital Riyadh. His Majesty the King participated this evening along with Majesties and Highnesses leaders of GCC countries in the first closed work session of the Supreme GCC Council Summit. The session was held under the chairmanship of the custodian of the two holy mosques of Saudi Arabia. And during the session, the leaders discussed the items on the agenda of the Riyadh Summit. His Majesty the King attended a dinner banquet held by the custodian of the two holy mosques in honor of the GCC leaders participating in the GCC summit in Riyadh. His Majesty King Hamad bin Isa Al Khalifa has arrived in Riyadh, heading Bahrain's delegation to the 36th session of the Supreme Council of Arab Gulf States Summit, which began later in the day. Upon arrival, His Majesty was received by the custodian of the two holy mosques, King Salman bin Abdul Aziz Al Saud, the Governor of Riyadh Region, His Royal Highness Prince Faisal bin Bandar bin Abdul Aziz Al Saud, the Crown Prince Deputy Premier and Tier Minister, His Royal Highness Prince Mohammed bin Naif bin Abdul Aziz Al Saud, Deputy Crown Prince, Second Deputy Premier, and Defense Defense Minister, His Royal Highness Prince Mohammed bin Salman bin Abdul Aziz Al Saud, the GCC Secretary General Dr. Abdul Latif bin Rashid Zayani, Minister of State for Can Cabinet member Dr. Issam bin Saad bin Saeed, the accompanying minister, the head of the Royal Protocols Khalid bin Saleh Al Abad, Riyadh Region Secretary Ibrahim bin Mohammed Al Sultan, the Saudi Ambassador to Bahrain Dr. Abdullah bin Abdul Malik Al Sheikh, and Bahrain's Ambassador to Saudi Arabia Sheikh Hamoud bin bin Abdullah Al Khalifa. His Majesty the King greeted senior participants, including their Royal Highnesses, Princes, Ministers, senior civilian and military officials. The custodian of the two holy mosques also shook hands with members of the official delegation accompanying His Majesty the King. His Majesty expressed pleasure at being in the Kingdom of Saudi Arabia and his utmost delight to meet again with the custodian of the two holy mosques and participate in the GCC summit. He confirmed a keenness to work with their Majesties and Highnesses, the leaders of GCC countries, to accomplish more steps to bolster the blessed drive adopted towards Gulf integration in all fields to achieve the people's aspirations to keep up with current developments and respond to future aspirations. 
He affirmed such brotherly meetings between the leaders of GCC are considered an opportunity to exchange views on all issues of concern to GCC to achieve everything in the welfare of the people, constructively seek to consolidate the security and stability of the region and the fast transformations in the regional and international arenas. He also said these challenges require top harmonization and coordination in the Gulf movement to boost collective cooperation, work persistently to activate the role of the GCC in a way to be felt by Gulf citizens in achieving their hopes and upgrade the integration and union. He said the works of this session hosted by Saudi Arabia will achieve the desired targets in deepening the relations between GCC member countries at all levels to boost shared interests thanks to the insightful wisdom of their majesties and highnesses as the leaders of GCC countries who have ensured and maintained GCC countries stability and security and thwarted many dangers. Finally, he wished the summit success to achieve the aspirations of prosperity of participating countries and also people. The mission of honor was formed under the chairmanship of Social Affairs Minister Dr. Majid Ben Abdullah Al Qasabi. Earlier today, His Majesty the King headed to the Kingdom of Saudi Arabia, leading Bahrain's delegation to participate in the Supreme Council of Gulf Arab States Summit in the Saudi capital. His Royal Highness the Crown Prince, Deputy Supreme Commander, First Deputy Premier Prince Salman bin Hamad Al Khalifa, was at the forefront of the Kingdom's senior officials who saw off His Majesty the King. His Majesty the King has been accompanied by an official delegation comprising His Highness Sheikh Abdullah bin Hamad Al Khalifa, the personal representative of His Majesty the King, His Highness Sheikh Nasser bin Hamad Al Khalifa, the representative of His Majesty for Charity Works and Youth Affairs, Sheikh Khaled bin Ahmed Al Khalifa, the Royal Court Minister, Sheikh Salman bin Abdullah bin Hamad Al Khalifa, the Chairman of the Survey and Land Registration Bureau, Sheikh Hamad bin Ibrahim bin Muhammad Al Khalifa, Dr. Hassan bin Abdullah Fakhru, the advisor of His Majesty for Economic Affairs. Also, Sheikh Khaled bin Ahmed bin Mohammed, Minister of Foreign Affairs. Nabil bin Yaqub al Hamar, advisor of His Majesty for Media Affairs. Lieutenant Yusuf bin Ahmed al Jalahma, Minister of Defense Affairs. Major General Khalifa bin Ahmed Fadallah, the head of the Royal Protocols. Hamad bin Ali al Kaabi, Personal Secretary of His Majesty. And Major General Mohammed bin Bahsain al Musalam, Commander of Sakhir Air Base. GCC leaders and heads of delegations arrived today in Riyadh to attend the 36th session of the Supreme Council of Arab Gulf States Summit. The summit will discuss, discuss topics regarding the GCC joint march and leaders will also discuss political developments on regional, Arab and international levels, especially topics regarding Yemen and Syria. The goal of the summit is to achieve joint cooperation to provide the best benefits for the region, provide high living standards for its people and maintain the GCC's security and stability. This comes under exceptional circumstances which require Saudi Arabia to exert political, security and media efforts to guarantee the success of the summit. The GCC summit commenced its activities this evening after the leaders touched down in the Saudi capital. The summit comes at a time of increased security and economic concerns. Mohammed Chaban reports. 
Their Majesties and Highnesses, the leaders of the GCC countries, have convened at the Dar'iya Palace in the Saudi capital Riyadh this evening with their accompanying delegations to kickstart the activities of the 36th GCC summit. The two day summit is being held amid several lingering political, security, and economic issues in the region. This is the first summit to be chaired by His Majesty King Salman bin Abdul Aziz of Saudi Arabia since he assumed power earlier this year. Riyadh has imposed a zero-risk policy as it beefed up security around the city and on all roads leading to the venue. The leaders meet in the midst of a global drop in oil revenue, a growing terrorist threat by Daesh, an ongoing conflict in Syria, a war to restore legitimacy in Yemen, and continuous interference by Iran. This is a regional Arab and Gulf stance taken by the Kingdom of Saudi Arabia. Hosting the Syrian opposition conference can change a lot in the regional and global arenas. The summit is expected to arrive at decisions that would boost the GCC's security and military integration, along with strengthening cooperation with international partners in the face of growing global threats. The leaders are also expected to stress on the need for humanitarian relief and medical aid to the people of Yemen while reasserting support for the legitimate government of Abdurrahman Mansour Hadi. And on the Syrian crisis, the leaders will most likely voice their support for the Syrian opposition conference being simultaneously held in Riyadh with the aim of bridging differences within the Syrian opposition factions. We are optimistic that the strategic importance that Saudi and the GCC have can make a difference and drive the whole region to safety. This summit is of strategic importance due to the key issues it would tackle and the current geopolitical situation. However, like the ones before it, it will continue to hold the integral function of stressing the cooperative stance between the GCC member states. Now that the leaders have arrived and discussions have commenced, the people of the Gulf wait for the solutions put forth for the ongoing issues in the region. Hamid Shaban, Bahrain Television News, Riyadh. The Deputy King, His Royal Highness Prince Salman bin Hamad Al Khalifa, held today the weekly Majlis at Rafah Palace. He welcomed members of the royal family, senior government officials, members of the representative shura and municipal councils, religious figures, academics, community leaders, journalists, and diplomats accredited to the kingdom. The attendees expressed appreciation for His Royal Highness' keen engagement with citizens by maintaining the commitment to Bahrain's values, traditions, and national identity. They also commended the efforts of His Royal Highness to reinforce the sustainable development of Bahrain under the development program initiated by His Majesty the King, as well as the government's efforts that deliver significant improvement of public services.
His Royal Highness the Prime Minister Prince Khalifa bin Salman al Khalifa received today at Kuzaibia Palace participants, heads of sessions, and speakers of the international conference titled Women in Public Life From Policy Making to Influential Impact, led by the President of Arab Parliament, Ahmed Al Jarwan, UAE's Director General of the General Women's Union, Noura Khalifa Al Suwaidi, and the Secretary General of the Supreme Council for Women, Halal Ansari. The Prime Minister affirmed that the hosting of this event by the Kingdom reflects Bahrain's successful steps towards the empowerment of women on political, economic and social levels, which have resulted in attaining decision-making positions in various fields. He affirmed that the development march of Bahrain is based on the efforts exerted by all Bahraini men and women, and that the Kingdom is proud of its rules and legislations that support the concept of equality between the two genders. He also expressed pride in Bahraini women's cadres who have proved their efficiency in various work fields, resulting in reaching top positions. The Prime Minister affirmed that Bahrain has always been supportive to women for their role in the development of the Kingdom and expressed pride in Bahraini women's achievements on both regional and international levels. He stressed the government's support to all women empowerment programs in order to enhance women's participation in the development process. And for their part, the delegation thanked the Prime Minister for his remarkable support to women and expressed their appreciation for Bahrain's leadership keenness to maintaining women's political, economic and social rights. They also hailed Bahrain's government efforts led by the Prime Minister regarding women empowerment in various fields.
In a message addressed to the world on the occasion of World Human Rights Day, which falls tomorrow, Thursday, and held this year under the slogan, Our Rights, Our Freedoms, Always, His Royal Highness the Prime Minister said Bahrain, under the leadership of His Majesty the King, has given the world a leading model in the field of political, economic and social human rights. He stressed Bahrain's march is ongoing towards further improvement in a way that contributes to raising its name at regional and international functions. He said the celebration of human rights Day should pave the way for concerted efforts to consolidate the foundations of the international system that maintains peace and coexistence and eliminates conflicts and wars all over the world. He added that Bahrain has succeeded in establishing a distinct approach aimed at maintaining respect of human rights and asserted that this unique diversity within Bahraini society was and will remain a source of strength and a key factor upon which Bahrain depends on for its development. The Prime Minister praised the King's initiative to establish Establish an Arab court for human rights based in Bahrain and said Bahrain's humanitarian and cultural roots of tolerance and openness were the foundations of its contemporary progress and civil and open society. He stressed that the celebration of the anniversary of the Universal Human Rights Day is an opportunity to work towards further improvement of the reality of human rights and confrontation of threats endangering human life in different parts of the world. He said Bahrain shares the world's orientations for the promotion and protection of human rights and freedoms and to ensure human beings right everywhere to live in security, peace and stability. His Royal Highness stressed the need to pay more attention to consolidating the foundations of security and global stability as a springboard towards a decent life in which everyone enjoys prosperous life. He warned of the dangers of leaving the door wide open to sectarian and hatred speech, which undermines unity of the people and their efforts on the path of progress, calling for supporting every move that deepens understanding between people and cultures. He praised the National Organization for Human Rights for its efforts at maintaining human rights gains and the positive developments taking place in Bahrain in this respect. His Royal Highness commended the efforts of the United Nations and its Secretary General Ban Ki-moon to promote human rights on an international level, calling upon the international community to back the international organization in order to improve the conditions of the people worldwide. His Royal Highness the Prime Minister deputized his advisor to attend the reception ceremony held by the Japanese ambassador to Bahrain, Mr. Kiyoshi Asako, marking the 82nd birthday of the Japanese emperor. Present were Sheikh Khalifa bin Rashid Al Khalifa, senior officials and the diplomatic corps. The reception was held at the Ritz-Carlton Hotel. Sheikh Salman conveyed the greetings of the Prime Minister to the Emperor of Japan, wishing him health and happiness and for his people prosperity. He loaded the high level of relations between Bahrain and Japan amid the care of the two countries to bolster bilateral cooperation for the interest of both countries. He wished Japan and its people further development and for his part, the Japanese ambassador thanked the Prime Minister for his support at enhancing bilateral relations between the two friendly countries, affirming his country's keenness desire to further consolidate cooperation with Bahrain for the interest of the two countries and their peoples. The Interior Minister, Lieutenant General Sheikh Rashid bin Abdullah Al Khalifa, attended today the celebration to mark International Anti Corruption Day in the presence of the Ministers of Finance, Education, and of Youth and Sports. The meeting was also attended by the Public Prosecutor, the Interior Ministry's Under Secretary for Nationality, Passport, and Residence Affairs, the Customs President, the Capital Governor, the Chief of Public Security, and other officials. The Minister expressed gratitude for the efforts of the General Directorate of Anti Corruption corruption and economic and electronic security as an executive authority that fights corruption crimes through the cooperation between the legislative, executive and judiciary authorities, as well as NGOs and media to implement the national anti-corruption strategy. General Director of Anti-Corruption and Economic and Electronic Security, Lieutenant Colonel Bassam Al Maraj, asserted that His Majesty's reform project has achieved many milestones, including the formation of the Anti-Corruption Directorate at the Interior Ministry. 
He thanked the Interior Minister for his directives that have contributed to the success of the department. A documentary of national anti-corruption efforts and the activities of the department was shown, including the initiatives of the Nazaha campaign. The minister honored participants and supporters of the campaign, along with winning students in a competition that was held in cooperation with the Ministry of Education. The minister then toured an exhibition of students' artworks who participated in the competitions. Deputized by His Royal Highness the Prime Minister, the Minister of Cabinet Affairs, Dr. Mohamed Mutawa, opened Asta DM Health Center, which provides high-quality health services with affordable prices. The Chairman of the Supreme Council of Health, Lieutenant General Dr. Sheikh Mohammed bin Abdullah Al Khalifa, and Health Minister Faiq Al Saleh were present. The Minister of Cabinet Affairs affirmed the government's keenness, led by the Prime Minister, to make investment in the health sector more active and facilitate it to achieve more progress in this sector and provide better services to the people of Bahrain. The President of the Health Centre, Dr. Azad Mupen, delivered a speech expressing appreciation for His Royal Highness' patronization of the opening of the centre. The centre aims to enhance the healthcare system in the Gulf over the next two years by expanding its medical facilities, receive large numbers of patients daily, provide distinctive services and improve the health sector of Bahrain. A high-level conference on women in public life from policies to impact continued today, discussing promoting women's participation in public life for inclusive economic policies and equal opportunities in the private sector. The conference is also discussing promotion or promoting equal opportunities in parliamentary practices and the role of civil society institutions in addition to building accountability from strategy to impact. The event is being held under the patronage of Her Royal Highness, wife of His Majesty the King, President of the Supreme Council for Women, Princess Sabika bint Ibrahim Al Khalifa, and is organized by the SCW in association with the OECD. The conference is gathering high-level representatives from ministers and heads of international and regional organizations working in the areas of women's affairs, policymakers and practitioners from countries in the Middle East and North Africa and the countries of OECD, as well as specialists from inside and outside Bahrain. Bahrain has ranked first with respect to the participation of women in senior management position in the public sector at the OECD Report 2013, where the percentage of women employed in the public sector in the administrative senior positions was 45% and exceeded the average in comparison to other countries in the Middle East and North Africa, which was 29.1%. In addition, the participation rate of Bahraini women in middle management position amounted to 59%.